with both in-person attendance at uh, City Hall here in the Council Chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue and remote attendance. Planning commissioners and staff are attending in-person and remotely via Zoom. Uh, I believe we have one planning commissioner who's attending by Zoom tonight. Uh, there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting via Zoom and make public comments during the meeting is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and it's also on the meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on the city's website or on YouTube. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications, Cable TV, Channel 8, and AT&T UVerse, Channel 99, and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 o'clock on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of the meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Uh, our technician tonight is Brian Johnson, and as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. Uh, and with that, we can have a roll call. Commissioner Esty. Here. Commissioner Jensen. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Vice Chair Christensen. Here. And Chair Westman. Here. Uh, next. Uh, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, now we're going to move on to oral communications. Are there any additions or deletions to our agenda tonight? Yeah, you have uh, two items that were added to agenda item 4B, 206 Hollister. Uh, one was a color and materials sheet, and the other was a landscape sheet with a little more detail uh, than what was originally in the packet. Okay. Those are at the dais and at the back table. Um, so now is the time for um, public comment. Um, and this public comment period is for uh, short communications uh, from the public concerning matters that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, all speakers are asked to print their name on the sign-in sheet located on the podium so we can accurately record your name in the minutes. Uh, if you would like to speak on an item not on the agenda, you're welcome to do that, and you can have three minutes. Is there anybody in the public who would like to speak? I think we have a gentleman here. Hi. My name is Goran Klapic. I worked security here one time uh, for Zeldas uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. We have a problem here in uh, Capitola when you go up to the McDonald's area where I uh, daily uh, buy my Diet Coke. There is a pollution across the CVS store. A lot of people drop their garbage when they walk out of the McDonald's on the pathway there. And I think it's not the... Uh, responsibility of the state or the government to clean up the mess then I think you have to write citations or something to make the people aware that you cannot drop uh, uh, stuff on the ground or if McDonald's or another company is overwhelmed with their duties to provide uh, um, adv adequate uh, garbage bins then they have to uh, put additional containers there so that the people can drop it inside there and not on the floor of uh, the city of Capitola. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. Can I ask you a question just so I make certain I understand exactly where you're talking about? So you're, you're talking about CVS. Yeah. Then, and then there's the 
pump station, the sewer sanitation district station across from that? No, no, no. And then the park that goes up with the bridge? No, 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 no. The 41st oh, Avenue. 41st Avenue. The Avenue at the McDonald's okay. there. Sorry. Then the, uh, people consume uh -huh. food or uh, Diet Coke or whatever they buy in it uh -huh. there. They go outside the store and if uh, there's not enough space in the garbage container to throw it away, they uh, go across on the CVS premises and they drop it, drop it on the floor there. And I don't agree that then the public works or whoever is responsible for it should be held accountable to remove this because I don't think it's the taxpayer's uh, uh, duty to uh, get rid of that. Right, okay. No, no, now I'm clear about where you're talking about so we can uh, look into the issue. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Is there anyone else who would like to address us? Uh, seeing no one, uh, are there any commission comments tonight? Yeah, I'd like to make a, a quick comment. Um, the Art and Cultural Commission um, got a, uh, an approved sculpture that's in work right now. Mm -hmm. So um, the artist's name is Anthony May. He's currently working in the lower parking lot making a fabulous sculpture. Um, if you uh, want to stop by and take a look, I certainly don't disturb him, but I, I just want to give him a shout out because he's very, very talented. Oh, good. So that's the tree stump? The, the tree stump, it? yeah. Oh, good. It's, It'd be nice. he, his goal is to finish by Sunday. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. I had, uh, I had one question, uh, comment. Sure. Um, just it was nice to see um, walking through the village that it looks like one of our first outdoor dining uh, units at from the sausage work. It looks like it's just about completed. Um, it was one of the uh, ones I think we made some modifications to, so it was nice that uh, to see um, you know one of those kind of in full action and it looks like it's almost ready, almost completed. So it's nice to see. Good. Good. Uh, any other comments? Uh, are there any staff comments? Yeah, no other comments. Okay. So we will move on to the approval of the minutes for the June. 20th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, does anyone have any corrections or additions? I have to abstain. I move approval. I move approval. Okay, we have a motion to approve. A second. And a second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. One of six. Mr. Will. Okay, now we're going to move on to our consent calendar. Um, all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine and will be enacted in one motion in the form listed on the agenda. Uh, there will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the Planning Commission votes on the action unless members of the public or the Planning Commission specifically request the item be pulled and discussed separately. And what we have on our consent agenda tonight is 1500 Wharf Road, number seven. Uh, it's a historical alteration permit um, for one of the Venetian condominium units. And then we have a 206 Hollister Avenue, and it's a design permit to demolish an existing cottage and detached garage and build a new two-story single-family residence and a detached single-story ADU unit on the property. So is there any one of the commissioners that would like to pull either one of those items? I would like to make at least a comment on item B. Um, and I can discuss it. You would like to discuss it? Yeah. Okay, so we will move item B, uh, 2006 Hollister Avenue, uh, to be our first um, public hearing item. Uh, so it'll become A1. I gotta call it that. So um, is there a motion uh, on the uh, 1500 Wolf Road item? I'll move to approve. Uh or A in the consent calendar. Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 
Um, do we want to do a roll call vote? Commissioner Esty? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Vice Chair Christensen? Aye. And Chair Weissman? Aye. All right, so now we will move on to our public hearings. And the first item on our public hearings is going to be the item from the consent calendar 206 Hollister Avenue. Uh, it is a design permit to demolish an existing cottage and detached garage and build a new two-story single-family residence. And can we have a staff report, please? Yeah, uh, I've got the staff report here, but uh, before I get going, I just wanted to offer a reminder to really try to talk into these. These mics are very directional, so um, just a reminder to the commissioners. So 206 Hollister, uh, the proposal is for a new residence and an ADU. Uh, project requires a design permit and a coastal development permit. I've got the aerial view here. Uh, property is 40 feet wide by 100 feet deep. And this is uh, some context photos from the street view uh, for existing conditions. The property is currently developed with a detached garage at the just about the front property line and there's an existing cottage that's about 600 square feet behind. Um, this property along with 204 Hollister were both listed on the city's 2005 uh, historic resources list and, and these were listed as potential resources. Uh, just a bit of background, the, the prior owner uh, commissioned uh, through the city a historic evaluation and the determination was that these were not eligible. So uh, we didn't need, didn't need to go further with this application. And then again, for reference, uh, the properties were, were developed as one property, uh, but have since been subdivided. So that gate with the arch, uh, the center line there of that gate is, is the property line on the right right hand side. So the site plan layout of the proposal before you uh, is a two story primary residence with a single car garage attached uh, on the left hand side, the tandem parking space behind uh, the property requires one covered one uncovered parking space and there's a limited standards ADU detached uh, single story 750 square feet in the rear yard the red circle is uh, one of the items uh, that staff was not able to fully support uh, in the recommendation to re remove this is a 30 inch palm tree it just about straddles the property line and the reason uh, we ultimately did not support removal of that tree was just because it it ultimately doesn't directly impact the development or limit the, the development on the of this project or the property and uh, the community tree and forest um, chapter in the muni code uh, is pretty clear on its goals to preserve trees and so without a, a strong reason or a limitation on development uh, we ultimately just didn't support this um, with all that being said, the commission has full discretion uh, to allow removal. So, <laughs> Moving on uh, to the elevations, this is a, a stone and stucco uh, exterior with uh, a ranch style design, two story uh, white vinyl windows. And the ADU just about follows the same pattern, but uh, just a little bit more subdued and is in the rear yard. Uh, this is your one of your additional mat materials that you were provided. So this is the color and material samples, uh, just showing the color of the stucco, white vinyl windows, comp shingle roof, which uh, is a small change from the staff report. I think the intent um, has changed in the last week to go with comp shingle rather than a metal seam. And uh, showing a little blue pop at the door and the stone clad columns at the front. And this is uh, your other additional material. So uh, the code requires us to look at uh, some details for front yard landscaping. And so the applicant provided uh, more detail on what the ground cover would actually be. And uh, there's uh, two proposed wax myrtle trees. And so the, uh, the canopy coverage complies at maturity would comply with uh, the city standard, actually with or without the palm tree. I'll clarify that ahead of time. So aside from the palm tree, uh, project just meets all development standards and um, 
we're recommending approval. I had a question regarding, um, uh, have we had any comments, um, additional comments from any of the neighbors regarding like window locations or viewing issues or anything like that? Yeah, no, no neighbors came in to ask questions or view plans. And so has there, there been any, ever any comments regarding any neighbors about viewing and stuff like that? Uh, I, I think there may have been a real estate agent actually that came in to look at plans, but no, no comments since the notice went out. Question: uh, A couple of them. So the palm tree, that's it. Looks like that is actually straddling the the line. So does the neighbor? Did they ever comment on that, or was there any discussion with the neighbor about removing that tree? Um, I think the the neighbor tried to remove that tree uh, within the last year and went through the process of voluntary removal, and um, ultimately the city wasn't able to make findings through that process, which has a bit of a higher bar uh, rather than um, development. So uh, ultimately, it would need to be a joint effort between both property owners. But um, again, the, the discretion would be with the commission. We can sort out uh, getting an, uh, if, if the commission goes in the direction to allow removal, we would make sure that both property owners are are in, are in agreement. You know, they both neighbors want to remove that tree. Within the last year, that's there have been moves made to uh, and the, remove the tree. There was also uh, some discussion about second story opaque windows. Could you point those out on the? Yeah, I'll, go, I'll go back to the elevation views. And so the, these are the side elevations. Uh, on the left side, uh, there's a a raised sill or semi clear story window here. Um, these windows are offset from the property line by 11 feet. Uh, so there's no treatment here, but uh, I believe this is a bathroom window and it is a clear story. And then on the right side, this is at, um, this is at six feet. So this one is opaque. These are clear story. And then these windows here are at four feet and are uh, proposed as opaque. And those opaque windows are, were they a condition or that's just a discussion? I can't remember if that's actually a condition of the approval. Yeah, so the history with this project is it came in in January 2023 and uh, had an ADU on the second floor, which by code does require uh, treatment of windows. Um, and so some of the, the recommendations that we gave the applicant in the first round review reflected that. Um, they have since modified and detached the ADU, uh, as well as uh, in the last several months, I think the Planning Commission has made some decisions to be a little more flexible on the wind upper floor windows, and so this, this project didn't get the benefit of that uh, current advice from staff. So, uh, so what you're saying is that they, when it was an ADU, they put in the opaque windows. Or Cella story, is that how you pronounce that? Um, it, but and then when they came in with a revision, they just left them. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So I guess I have a couple comments about this palm tree. Um, I'm assuming you all can hear me. Yes. Uh, two things that concern me about it. One, palm trees are don't have a tap root and they survive on lateral roots, which are two to three feet underneath the ground. And I was concerned about that's pretty close to the prop, the actual physical building and the foundation, et cetera. And would the construction by its nature damage those roots and therefore, uh, somehow, uh, you know, result in damage to the tree. Uh, my other comment is palm trees are not native to Northern California at all. So I don't really have a lot of sympathy for a palm tree itself. Um, and the third comment is if I, if they, if we grant them a, the ability to remove this tree, um, this, the city or the Sydney goal, excuse me, not ordinance, the goal is a 15% coverage by trees on an individual property. 
if we remove it, um, they still will have about 18% of the property covered by tree canopy after they plant the uh, the two trees that they're talking about um, planting to replace the one palm tree they're taking out per our rules of a two to one replacement. So I'm I'm not, and I the fact that the neighbor next door wants to remove it, so these two property owners are kind of in agreement. I'm not opposed to letting them remove this tree. Hi, um, I'm Karma Heitzman, and I own the property next to this at 208 Hollister. And actually, I did come into the planning office and look at the plans uh, with my real estate agent. So that's probably what he's recalling. Um, so uh, one question I have is I've uh, heard two different reports that there's been a survey of the property line. And I saw the most recent survey and where the flags were that apparently my fence is in 18 inches, that there's actually 18 inches on the other side of where my fence is that's part of my property. I don't need to, I'm not interested in moving my fence. I just want to make sure that the construction and whatever they're doing is beyond that extra 18 inches and then whatever setback, because right now the existing property is like right on the fence. Um, I mean, it's old, I realize that. So I don't know, it, it, there wasn't a clear path for Get, making sure that that we're on the same page with that, but clearly that's something that's important. Um, eighteen inches is eighteen inches around here. Um, okay, because it looked like there were already this little survey flags there, and I just want to make sure that's what they're basing it on because they were eighteen inches into that property. So, okay. Um, and then um, in terms of the ADU in the back, from my back bedroom on the second story, I do have an ocean view. It sounds like because the ADU is a one story, that'll be okay. But I would love to make sure I'm preserving my tiny little ocean view from up there. So I don't know if there's a way to, um, you know, have more information about the, the height line of that roof or something like that because it would be in the back. And then final thing, I just want to understand, my husband and I both work from home, what the construction hours are, are if there's rules in Capitola about when construction can happen. Remember, I'm any more off the top of my head. Uh, I believe it starts at Eight in the morning or seven? I think it's eight and then I think eight, eight to seven thirty p.m. Eight to seven thirty p.m. And uh, they can work on Saturdays, but I don't think on Sundays. But staff could look that up for you. It is in the city regulations. There is an ordinance that determines when construction can take place. Okay, that would be helpful. And then, is is there anyone I can speak with once construction starts to make sure? about the, the property line and, and where that's starting and all that kind of thing? Talk to the building inspector because they will inspect the foundation to make certain when it's dug that it conforms to the setback based on the property line. And how would I get a hold of that person? <laughs> Sorry. Well, they're upstairs here in City Hall, so okay. you could call them and ask them to let you know when they're going to come out to uh, inspect the foundation. And do we know when construction's starting? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? Uh, is the applicant here? Because we might have a couple questions for the applicant. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'll let other people go. We should check Zoom. Because I, I think the designer was going to be joining on Zoom. Okay. So, Kurt, if Kurt is there is a, an attendant on, on Zoom designer. named Kurt. Okay. So, seeing no one, we'll close the public portion and bring it back to the commission. Would someone like to start the discussion? Um, 
Commissioner Esty, would you like to add anything else from the comments that you made earlier? No, I'm sorry about that. I spoke a little bit out of turn, but no, nothing, um, nothing additional. Thank you. Um, I would uh, I would recommend that we remove the condition of preserving the palm tree and allow them to remove that palm tree. Um, and I would also um, be curious to know, I don't know if I really want to get into this discussion, but we talked about this opaque windows and how we were a little bit more relaxed on that than, than perhaps staff was. And, and as Brian pointed out, um, this application came in before that discussion so if the if the applicant was interested in making those clear I'd be willing to have that discussion but I don't want to bring it up unless, unless he wants to change it. I can I agree with Peter um, I, I like the if if there's support to remove the tree yeah okay so it seems like the one issue we have is the palm tree and I don't have any Difficulty and it looks like so. Seems like whoever wants to make a motion on this should include uh, the removal of the palm tree. And um, you know, we can ask the applicant how they feel about the window situation if you would like to address that. So let me ask a question then: Is the is this is that a con the, the the opaque windows is that a condition uh, in the approval? It's not written in; it's just on the plan. So what I was going to suggest is that they can work with staff and any neighbors who those windows, you know, are close to their house, and uh, we can give staff the authority. To make the decision about whether or not you know the windows should be opaque or clear with the direction if there's not a problem then you know we see no reason why they shouldn't be clear I agree with that recommendation okay so hopefully you're going to include that in a motion uh, do we need to include that or to recommend I mean if we're just we're just directing staff that that is our opinion that you can please work with since it's not a condition that you guys can just work with that, and I think they've been given direction. Okay. Unless someone, Paul or Jerry, disagrees, then they have that direction. No, my only concern would be, um, and I, I'm definitely on the side of like with the opaque window, uh, having that re um, requirement released. But I would think that I'd want the neighbors to be notified of that, so we could hear them come forward, um, or or go to the city staff if there was a concern. So I wouldn't want to remove that condition arbitrarily tonight. I'd want this neighbors or anybody in that surrounding area to weigh in on this. And now that's basically what you said, right? Right. So they'll work with staff. Okay. It looks like you have direction there. And so I will make a motion. Not to interrupt, but we do have Kurt Lines raising his hand and I can just speak on Zoom if I could allow him. Uh, so we've already closed the public portion of the meeting. Is he the designer? Yeah, he, he's the designer. Um, what's the desire of the commission? Do we want to? Let's hear. Want to okay hear? Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll hear what he has to say. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Please unmute yourself, and you can speak. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Kurt. Can, uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear okay, you. good. Um, well, thanks commissioners for uh, reviewing our uh, project, our proposed project. 
Um, about the windows, um, it was a requirement when the ADU was part of the initial design of the main residence. We had the ADU on the second level, and it was a city ordinance that those windows re were required to be opaque. Since then, we've removed the ADU. We put it as a detached structure in the rear yard. And I did not know that I could remove the opaque requirement to the upper windows of the main residence. Um, we would definitely like to remove that. Um, the other neighbors around the, the property do not have opaque windows that look onto this proposed project. Um, so we would like to also have the, the same uh, conditions. The, um, the, the floor level on the second upper level is mainly all bedrooms and bathrooms. So the small windows you see in there are um, ventilation for bathrooms and the larger windows are um, just cross ventilation windows for the bedrooms. Um, we would be willing, I think, to talk to people about the size of those windows if it became uh, an issue with uh, the council or any of the neighbors. But I think there's like an aesthetic value to having the windows at the sizes they are. And um, we try to design this uh, modern contemporary home to match other uh, homes and the quality of homes in the area. So we would like to keep it as designed and remove the opaque requirement. I think I'm actually uh, going to interrupt you because we've actually discussed this and we've already given direction to the staff that they can work with you and the owners and the neighbors to decide um, if any of the windows will have an impact on the neighbors next door. And if not, you can work with the staff about most of those windows not being opaque. Just for clarification, if I might, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lentz probably doesn't realize that this, this topic has come up with other applicants, and we generally have agreed that as long as um, you have a second story window and it doesn't, you know, it isn't blatant, it doesn't face directly into someone else's property, that clear windows are okay. And we generally look around the neighborhood and, and like you say, look at precedent. If there are lots of other second story windows and they're not too oppressive, then, you know, we generally have, have um, allowed those to, to, uh, to go clear, basically. So, so that's why we feel confident that you could work with staff and come up with an, a, with an agreement. Um, um, and, and we don't need to specifically uh, vote on it. Okay, great. Thank We're you. more than happy to work with staff uh, to take care of that issue. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay. So, so now. So, do what? What is the consent? What? Do, what item is the condition that talks about the palm tree? It's just in the recommendation. So I, I, I move that we approve staff recommendation for 206 Hollister Avenue with the exception of um, we are allowing the palm tree to be removed. I'll second that. Please beat me. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Jensen. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Vice Chair Christensen. Aye. And Chair Westman. Aye. So the motion passes unanimously. Uh, so now we'll move on to the next item under our public hearings, uh, which is uh, 836 Bay Avenue. Uh, it's for design permit to replace an existing gas station canopy structure and a sign permit with variance requested for a new wall sign located in the community commercial zoning district. So can we have a staff report?
Yes, thank you and good evening. The application before you is a replacement of an existing gas station canopy with a new 1900 square foot canopy uh, in its stead. The project requires approval of a design permit, sign permit, and two variance requests related to that sign permit. Uh, this project is located in the Community Commercial Zoning District. This is the site as it appeared several months ago while they were still under construction with the car wash. It can be seen to the left. The station and the site as a whole is located on the Bay Avenue Commercial Corridor, surrounded by non-residential uses to the east, west, and south. Highway 1 and the northern city limit boundary are to the north. Uh, sorry, Sean, we don't see the presentation on Zoom. My apologies. You see it now? Yep, that's it. Thank you. The site was recently improved, as said before, uh, with a new car wash that has been since finaled uh, adjacent to the convenience store. This is a photo of the, the existing canopy, a more recent photo, and you can see on there an, a number of strike impacts from tall vehicles. Uh, this is a continuing issue for the, the owners there and is one of the prime reasons they are now looking to replace it. It is substandard in terms of clearance for the kind of vehicles they receive. This is the proposed site plan. The area in blue indicates the both existing and proposed location of the canopy. The new canopy is going on approximately the same location centered wise. It's slightly larger, but it otherwise covers the existing gas island pump stations, which aren't being uh, replaced. The new sign is indicated on the front of that canopy face along Bay Avenue. Uh, where the red arrow is pointing. And this is, this represents two different elevations, the side elevations, uh, they're both symmetrical. The uh, pitched canopy on the existing canopy is being replaced in favor of a flat frame for uniform clearance. The new structure is 19 feet tall with a vertical clearance of 16 feet. The fascia pace, excuse me, the fascia paint panels are constructed from blue and white painted aluminum composite material. So that's a coated aluminum surface. And this is the front and rear elevation. The only difference between those two are the, the absence of that new sign on the rear elevation facing the convenience store. So this would be looking at the street or from the street. The sign permit itself is exclusively for the new Chevron Hallmark logo that goes on the canopy. It's approximately four square feet in size, internally illuminated. The site already maintains a 39 square foot monument sign as well as a 26 square foot food mart sign on the convenience store. This site and zone are permitted to have up to one wall sign and a total of a total cumulative sign area of 50 square feet. Because the addition of this new sign would exceed both the cumulative area as well as the number of allowed wall signs, uh, a variance is required for both standards. In relation to the variance request, staff was able to make findings supportive of granting a variance for both variance requests. Findings A through F are captured on two slides. The first of, of three are shown here. Of note, uh, three findings, A, C, and E, which I'll cover briefly here. The prime one, A, uh, are that there are unique circumstances re relating specifically to the business itself rather than the lot characteristics uh, in that it operates three distinct commercial uses uh, out of three separate commercial structures, including convenience store, gas station, and car wash. When compared to other properties, multiple businesses located on the same lot would generally be entitled to their own 
signage allotments based on their own shop frontage. An example would be the Noble Hill Shopping Center, which is a consolidated lot, and each business has and is entitled to its own signage. Finding C, the, the variance enables the subject property to have similar signage to previous approvals uh, for gas stations elsewhere in the same zone, such as uh, the subject property. There are two such examples on the following slide. This is the intersection of Capitol Road and 41st Avenue. There are two, two gas stations there, a, another Chevron station as well as a Shell station, both of which have convenience stores and gas stations. The Shell station on the left also has its own automated car wash. And in both these cases, they have signage that would exceed current standards. They have, uh, the Chevron station has monument sign, two canopy wall signs, and two wall signs on the convenience store, whereas the Shell station has a monument sign, two canopy wall signs, a car wash sign, as well as a convenience store wall sign. With respect to finding E, uh, it also relates to the examples just shown on the previous slide, and that it would not constitute a granting of special privilege. Therefore, staff is in support of, of these primary and the rest of the uh, findings for variances and would support the exceeding the number of wall signs as well as the cumulative sign area. With that, staff recommends approval of the project as conditioned as well as the uh, supporting findings. Anybody have any specific questions of the staff before we open the public hearing? One quick one. Uh, under uh, undergrounding of the utility lines, is that already, is, that's a condition. Is that Was that already done? We were looking at that. One moment. condition was included when we did the car wash. Yeah, so the question is, it's a condition now, and I, I'm just wondering if it was already implemented. Yeah, it looks like it would have already been done, so uh, they would not need to do any further action. So they're, already, they're, in, they're compliant with that condition. Okay. Correct. Um, okay, seeing no other questions for staff, we'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody here from the public who would like to speak? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Kurt Wagonecht. I'm with K-12 Architects, um, the architect on this project and the car wash project. Um, just like to say that um, uh, the, the owner couldn't be here direct tonight, but uh, he's uh, approved uh, all the conditions of the project that you've, you've got. So Thanks. we're ready to go. All right. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. We'll bring it back to the commission. Um, we'll start with Commissioner Esty so we don't forget him since he's on Zoom. Yeah, no additional comments. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Jensen? I, I would just like to say that that's... It's a really nice, I really enjoy all the improvements that you guys have made to that gas station. It's one of the nicest in Capitola, and I just wanted to add that. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? I would make a motion to approve okay. the, staff, the staff recommendation. A um, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Esty? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Vice Chair Christensen? Aye. And Chair Westman? Aye. All right. So now we um, will move on on our agenda to see if we have uh, a director's report. Is there anything you would like to tell us, Brian? 
Yeah, I'm uh, filling in for Katie on this, but uh, we have a little bit more content to share this evening with you in the director's report. Okay. So, first item to share is uh, we are in the late stages of reviewing a minor design permit and tenant improvement for Lucky's at uh, 1475 41st and New Leaf is going to be moving into that space and has proposed a pretty robust facade upgrade. And so this project not adding any floor area, uh, it does qualify for a minor design permit, which is under review of the community development director. And so the procedure goes that we're going to send out a 10 day notice uh, of pending action. Mm -hmm. And if we receive comment, then we schedule a formal public hearing, but uh, receiving no comment, the director can't approve this project. So it is a bit of a higher profile location. Um, so just wanted to bring that to the commission's attention. RRM uh, helped us with the review and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty nice upgrade. So if we if we do get uh, a, some kind of public comment or request for a hearing, it will be coming to the commission. And uh, the the follow up to that is that at the New Leaf space, uh, grocery outlet is, is looking at that space. That's interesting. Grocery outlet is looking at the New Leaf existing New Leaf space. So um, that one. Uh, I don't have an update for you. They're, they're a little farther out. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, my second item is the dining decks. And so uh, we do have our first prototype example that is uh, at about an 85% level. Uh, and uh, also wanted to give you an update on for art and wine, we'll, we're, we're tracking three uh, that will be operational by that time. So it'd be the English Ale, Sausage Works, and and the wine bar next door to Sausage Works. So we, we were really happy to have an example. Uh, I think it helped everybody, and, and I think the, the flexibility that the commission considered in June, you know, it, it kind of proved out that we have one now in, in reality. It's, I think that the prototype was kind of stalled out for some of the owners. So thank you. Uh, two other updates is just the housing element. So uh, just getting uh, an update on the timeline. So on July 29th, we received the formal comments from HCD. Uh, HCD has extended a line of communication to, through Katie to um, catch comments uh, in, in the midst of their formal review, um, basically short-circuiting the process, and, and the city's consultant is also involved in that. Uh, so they've been able to to get a quick rebound on some of these comments um, and the initial 90-day period isn't even up until October. So it's allowed us to uh, not only stay on schedule but, but be hopefully ahead of schedule uh, with the upcoming forecast of having an October 19th special meeting at the, the Planning Commission. Are there any showstoppers in there? Anything that looks particularly difficult to overcome? I have not heard of any. So the Katie noted, let me know that most of them were uh, the um, the AFFH comments, um, affirmatively. Um, what, is, what is the acronym? Affirmatively furthering fair housing. There you go. Um, but I, I'm not close enough to it to where I, I can speak specifically on that. This is the outline, we're ahead of schedule, and uh, the target would be if we get this all back to HCD, we would avoid the, uh, the builder's remedy risk. And then lastly, uh, we've had some uh, pretty in-depth pre-application meetings with MidPen Housing for this site at 1098 38th Avenue, which was formerly a skilled nursing facility that was demolished about a year ago. Uh, what we're seeing in their concept plans is a 100% affordable project, 52 units. They're not totally settled on parking, but they are around a mid-60s parking count. 
with a target of one and a half spaces for their multi bedroom units and a one to one for their single bedroom units. And they've, they've kind of minimized the concessions across the board from the the other project that we uh, reviewed earlier this year at 4401 Capitola Road. So uh, they learned some lessons from that project. They also have a bigger site to work with. So uh, that project is, is on schedule for submittal in September. Is that it? That's it for the report. Thank you. Uh, are there any commission comments at this time? I just had a question. Um, when we were going through, um, you know, the housing element, I think we picked out a site that there's going to be some ancestral drawings done. Do you have an update on that or what, when, it, where we are with that, what that can look like? Yeah, I don't have an update, but I remember that discussion. I will, I'll follow up. Great. I thought the site we picked was where outdoor world exactly. used to be. Yeah. I was just wondering if there's an update when we might see that. one. Um, I think you're all aware that in Capitola, the drainage, um, storm drain system for our city is not the city. Uh, it's operated by Zone 5, which is a county agency. And there are um, several neighborhoods in Capitola that don't have any storm drains. Um, one of them is the Riverview Terrace neighborhood. Um, the Depot Hill neighborhood, and uh, one of the things that's it's happening, I'm a resident of the Riverview Terrace neighborhood, is that um, all of the drainage from that neighborhood now comes down to Riverview Drive and has to flow down the street to get to the first storm drains, which are sort of at the corner of Riverview Drive and um, Riverview Avenue there. Um, and it's becoming a problem for a lot of the homeowners on the river side of Riverview Avenue because we're flooding now uh, if there's a, a significant storm. It doesn't have to be major, major, but if there's a lot of rain, uh, our properties now flood. And um, sort of been thinking about it. And one of the things that I think is adding to this is there's a lot of impervious surface being created in that neighborhood as more people pave their front yards and, you know, use them as patios. And we don't require any permits for people to do that kind of work in their yard, but it is beginning to have an impact. So my request is to uh, for staff to, you know, at least contact Zone 5 and sort of give us an update. Do they have any plans to do any improvements in these neighborhoods in Capitola that don't have any storm drains? I think the thing, I'm not, I'm not certain, but I think it's true in the 40s up in um, the Jewel Box area. I don't think there's storm drains in that area. But it is becoming a problem, so... I think storm drains are something the city's ultimately going to have to look into to, to solve the problem, particularly as we add density, you know, just like the project we saw in Hollister tonight. You know, there's two buildings uh, now with people adding ADUs, and so it's becoming more of a problem. Uh, my second one is if you could just check on the gentleman's complaint about the garbage behind CVS. I wasn't, to uh, be honest, completely clear about it, but maybe somebody could check out that area and find out what's going on for us. And that's it for me. Anything else? We'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Good night. CVS and CVS yeah. and, and McDonald's is, is, you know, a walkway yeah. between the two, but it's all private yeah. property. Is it? I, I think he's suggesting, like, that we cite the people that the business owners. Is that what he's saying? So it's interesting. That not only is interesting because years ago, there was a community development that the city of Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, we, we can send, uh, I don't know if I... Well, 